Hello everyone, Storm One One here. Today we'll be having an update of what we currently got going on. Is a tornado outbreak in a parts of Central and in Eastern Texas that's expected to continue to move to the east throughout the overnight hours and move into Tuesday across parts of Mississippi, Alabama, Arkansas, Louisiana, maybe in the parts of Tennessee, and maybe parts of the Florida Panhandle as well, getting into Tuesday. Night as well. There could also be another potential severe weather set with the same system getting into Wednesday, especially up in the parts of the Ohio Valley, but there's also another area to watch a little bit further to the south as well. Before you get started this video, if you guys would like whatever related content, you can subscribe to my channel. We do stuff for all the time on this channel. Plus, we'll have one or two more updates. We'll have another video update tomorrow uh, for our uh, Tuesday event. Probably another one on Wednesday as well. So definitely stay tuned for more updates as well. We're looking to the watch warning advisory display, and it, it is active. Uh, of course, we got our Toria outbreak. I'm already saying Toria outbreak because before this video, we already had several long track strong tornadoes, which is pretty bad. Uh, especially along the Interstate 35 corridor, and we still have tornado warning supercell still ongoing out there. As the time of this video, we also got blizzard warnings for parts of the Panhandle of Texas, Oklahoma, into southwestern Kansas, where some places could see at least a couple inches of snow, maybe several inches of snow, and it could see some pretty strong winds with that as well. We could certainly see flooding problems from eastern Texas all the way up into parts of Arkansas and Tennessee, and these gray box or brown boxes i should say are wind advisories things could be windy even without showers and storms as well so certainly pretty active out there as expected here for the spc for today uh we have a moderate risk for severe weather for parts of central and eastern texas that includes places like austin round rock college station bryant and temple texas as well, and you have the enhanced risk that includes places like Houston, Dallas, and Fort Worth, Arlington, and Plano, Texas, as well. We do have a 50% risk area uh, in the parts of East Central Texas, a small area, but it does include places like College Station, Bryan, and Plastine, Texas, as well. And then you got the hatched area, which is in that black uh, shaded area as well. That's an indication for potential for strong tornadoes, which unfortunately we've already seen some strong tornadoes out there today. Damage winds is there, but it can also we could also see the potential for significant damage in winds as well. That's within the hatch area. That's where we could possibly see wind gusts, excuse me, at least 75 miles per hour. We also can see some large hail out there as well. And that hatch area indicates the potential for two inches or greater in diameter size hail as well. Then the tornado outbreak moves into tomorrow. We got a moderate risk for severe weather again for parts of Louisiana into Mississippi. It will not surprise me if this gets expanded just a little north as well. Possibly at least a March risk could get as far north as the Kentucky Tennessee border, but the slight risk, it probably the enhanced risk as well, could get expanded northward. As well, I don't think it's going to get expanded further to the east as balls been trending a little bit slower with this, and that's not always a good thing. If you got your main squad line trending slower, you will want it to tra actually want to train faster. And if you want, and what would happen if the squad one were to train faster? It gives less time here for instability values to really come up. And you have a short window for supercells opportunity as well. Then on day three, which is Wednesday, we got a standard slack risk for southeast Alabama, the panhandle of Florida. And it goes all the way up into southern Virginia. And you got the margin risk that also includes parts of the Ohio Valley as well. Don't be surprised if parts of the Ohio Valley does get upgraded to a slack risk here uh, for Wednesday as well. Things are looking pretty interesting up there as well and all hazards could be possible with that as well but let's first get check out the current environment here it looks like the mod just updated the outlook here actually stay the same okay well anyway this is your sniffy tour parameters currently 
Really, over a one, conditions could be favorable for tornadoes, but when we get over a two, that's where conditions could be favorable for strong tornadoes. We gotta have a number of a six. That's three times more than favorable for the potential for strong tornadoes. So six is a pretty high number when it comes to significant tornado parameters. So that's certainly not a good thing. And you can tell here where your supercells are located, which is out here. They're not even in the prime environment yet. Some of them are not. So that's kind of scary, especially given the fact these are the same storms that likely produce large destructive tornadoes along the Interstate 35 corridor. I think we're in a little bit of a break when it comes to at least tornado activity for now. And I'm saying for now, it's not over yet. This is only just the beginning here. Um, but anyway, we do expect these supercells, if they do continue to stay the streak discreet out there, that still, you'll still have that strong tornado threat out there as well. And some of those could be long track as well. Surface base cape here, it's been generally 2,000 to 2,500 joules per kilogram, and that's it's plenty for severe weather. Here's the mixed layer cape, basically the same thing, except it's further north. That's what's keeping the cluster of thunderstorms up in northern Texas going, is that mixed layer cape. Mid level lap rates, and the numbers are not very high here, uh, but they are just high enough to lead to some discrete mode out there. 7 to 7.5. Uh, is favorable for severe weather, but where you get where you have your cluster of storms at, the lap rates are not as strong up there as well, which is kind of leading to more of a linear mode up there as well. Downdraft cape, which would be the indication for the potential damage wind threat, you can see with that cluster of thunderstorms up in Norva, Texas, have not gotten into prime environment yet either. So, possibly when you get into parts of northeastern Texas, Texas. That's where you can see the potential for or higher risk for some damage to winds as well. And wind shear. Storm re relative helicity. You only need above 150 to have a favorable environment for tornadoes. We've got a number of 700 in northeastern Texas. That's a very high number. Even 400 by itself is still a high number. And you got 700, and we're only in the late afternoon to early evening. And typically, when we get to the overnight hours, those numbers begin to increase. So I cannot imagine how high some of these numbers are going to be later tonight. You may have to potentially see story to felicity values 800, maybe as high as 900 in some places out there. And that's a very strong wind shear type of environment as well. And there's still going to be a decent amount of instability out there. So that's very concerning. And that's why I said here earlier that these storms are not even the prime environment for severe weather. Or prime environment just yet for strong severe storms. So, I mean, that's kind of scary when you think about it out there as well. Bulk shear effective. Bulk shear. Plenty out there going on. And here's your surface of composite. Numbers are way up there. High as a 20 in the parts of eastern Texas. So basically what the saying here is, is you got high numbers out there, uh, especially for wind shear. So basically overall, especially for the discrete storms here, the, the long track strong tornado threat is likely to continue over the next several hours until these storms here begin to cluster up. Whenever they cluster up, that's when that significant tornado threat will begin to decrease. But that will increase the potential for damage to winds as well at the same time. But I think we're right ahead widespread damage to winds than strong to potentially intense tornadoes that could be long track. So I think most of us could agree um, with that. But really, overall, this is still. A very good environment here for all hazards of severe weather. And it also includes the threat for large hail as well. So let's check out the Hermal. This is the 18Z run, so this is an older run. But you kind of get an idea of the, uh, what's the word for it? Oh, the accuracy. Or how well it is done. And you can see for 18Z, which you know, this is really within an hour or two of the event. Not bad, but whenever I look back to previous runs like 12Z back in late morning into overnight by 
6C. It was a little bit underdone with the thunderstorm coverage here along the dry line. So that's something to note. And that kind of gives you an idea for, excuse me, for Tuesday's event. And like I was saying in the last video, there's still uncertainty here if this is going to be messy mode or just, or not so much a way of messy mode. And what messy mode is, the potential for scattered to numerous unorganized showers of sorts, which will lim make the air more stable and the setup may not be as bad. But if the elven mixed layer were to be stronger, you may not see much way in messy mode and that could lead to a more significant event as well. So that's another thing to note as well. And I believe the her model was a bit overdone with the elven mixed layer as well. And I kind of figured that because it was an outlier compared to so many other models as well. So, yeah. And you can see here, it's got some of the storms dying out. And I highly doubt they're going to die out. Highly doubt it. Uh, but either way, it does show some redevelopment out there. And you can see here, this is by probably about right around noon right here. Uh, right here. So, at this point here, you got a squad line of storms that stretch from eastern Arkansas all the way back down to the Gulf of Mexico here. It's also a broken line as well. But when you get later day, when we get better instability values, they do become more organized as well at this point. You also notice at the same time though, along the Mississippi and Alabama border, you got prefrontal convection out there as well. And those are the ones that may have the potential to produce long track tornadoes as well. And you do see here later in the day here, widespread convection becomes a problem here and this could be your fail mode as well where you have widespread convection that happens out there and most of it's disorganized and it may not be as bad as of it as we would think as well now it doesn't necessarily mean that we're not going to see severe weather you can tell here on the northern side here like i was saying earlier in the video it will not surprise me if we see the expansion of the marginal site possibly enhanced risk further north We've also been pretty consistent here that especially in northern Mississippi, even the parts of northwestern Alabama, the southwestern Tennessee, that we could see an intense squall line of thunderstorms. And the main threat of those would be damage to winds, but we could also see the potential for QLCS tornadoes at the same time. As you can see here as we get laid deeper to the evening hours, with all that widespread activity coming on going, basically your squall line kind of falls apart. Now, this is just a simulation. It would not go exactly is what it shows here, but we probably have the best idea by tomorrow morning, and especially to see how this cluster source here would look like as well. Also, there will be a significant flooding potential in a part of several Arkansas, even back into eastern Texas, where thunderstorms will be training over some of the same areas as well, which I did not show the rainfall amounts in the last video. You may as well do it while I remember here. And apologies if it's slow uh, due to the later upload today. My internet was very slow earlier in the day. And luckily, we got faster internet, which is good. You can see here what I'm talking about here. It's not a widespread significant event. There is a moderate risk, by the way, for excessive rainfall for some of these areas in several Arkansas back to eastern Texas. But you can see here, there are isolated areas I could see at least four inches of rain. This could all come in a short period of time as well and that could lead to the potential for significant flooding problems so definitely got to be aware for the potential for some flooding issues as well because these are going to be pretty efficient when it comes to rainfall as well you see as well as higher rainfall totals gets us up in the parts of the lower hall valley and the tennessee valley as well if we go back to severe weather real quick let's check out the significant weather parameters you can see here from the Hermal, not a bad job when it comes to stiff couture parameters, especially when you got numbers as high as a, high as a six. It's actually underestimated a little bit, which is pretty surprising. Usually models could be overdone. You can see here with stiff couture parameters, you can see here it's not very widespread, but you also do have some decent numbers out there regardless here, especially when you get later in the day here, numbers do come back up. In the parts of really along the Mississippi Alabama border. Let's go back earlier in the day though. Let's go back to right around Tuesday morning here in northern Louisiana. 
this is for your squad line here. This is what I'm talking about, me about messy mode. You can see here from the Hermal, it's not as aggressive with the lap rates here, especially in the mid-levels. So this is some good news if you do not want a significant severe weather event, if you're that type of person. This is some good news. And you can also see here where the green line is very close to the red line here. That's an indication that there's a lot of moisture in the atmosphere here. From the surface, all the way up to around 300 millibars. And that's way up there as well. So, and especially when there's a lot of lift out there, there's some, there's a pretty decent probability this could become a messy mode, and it may not be that bad. But let's get later today here, right around prime time for severe weather. Some of those numbers do come back up a little bit, and they become a little more widespread. You can see here at the same time, the lap rates still back off just a little bit as well. Similar scenario here when it comes to the messy mode potential, but even some of those showers of thunderstorms may have the potential to become a little bit organized and you may see the potential for all hazards at the same time. You can see here, you got a very nice photograph, plenty of wind shear out here, especially when it comes to story to felicity. And some of the models did underestimate the story to felicity as well. So that's another thing to note as well. You also got plenty of instability. So you pretty much got most of your grades here for potential for all hazards as well. I don't think this is going to be a major hail event, I don't think. Especially, again, the fact there's not a whole lot of uh, much way of mid-level lap rates in there, which usually can help with the hail threat, but I don't really see that uh, as well. But I think this is going to be more in a way of a damage, wind, and tornado event here. I think that's going to be your primary threats. Uh, as you get here deeper in the day here to the evening hours here, you can see how your numbers do begin to back off as well. We'll get another sounding out there. Even as the numbers back off, you still got pretty good pretty good ingredients out there as well. Once your values do begin to back off a little bit, that's pretty typical there, but they're still high enough for severe weather. Still plenty of instability. But man, lap rates do become pretty weak as well so yeah there's definitely some potential that tomorrow could become a failure mode top us up here and that's why i've been saying over the last couple of days that monday's been looking looks better than tuesday despite of having that moderate day three moderate risk for parts of louisiana mississippi than what's been going on out here so yeah we'll have to wait and see what tomorrow morning uh looks like that's when we have the best idea because there's still that possibility, hey, it's a little bit mixer, maybe stronger than expected. You may not see much way of messy mode. That's still possible too, but I'm kind of leaning towards more messy mode. And I don't think it's going to be as bad as some people may think. But regardless, with messy mode, there can still be an organized cluster of thunderstorms out there. An area I will focus on here will probably have to be in these areas of here near the triple point as well and what a triple point is that's where you have your well let's do this the right way you got your occluded front here's your cold front and here's your warm front this is your triple point that's where three different types of fronts meet and right around near that triple point it's where you may have a lot of wind shear to work with and that can help increase the severe weather potential as well so if there's an area i will really pay attention to even if there's messy mode It'll probably have to be near the triple point as well. So that's a definite an area I'll definitely focus as well. And of course, as you expect here, when you get to overnight hours, some of those numbers to back off. But even to Tuesday night here, severe weather could still continue over parts of Alabama and the parts of Florida. Now, with some of those favorable conditions out there, I think the her model of what's suggesting when it comes to reflectivity, I think it might be a little bit more organized then what the Hermal suggests, if it if I'm pretty realistic about it, where you still have plenty of instability, decent about wind shear, I think these storms are going to be more organized than what the Hermal is suggesting out there if that does occur. So that's something I should note as well, especially for areas and parts of Alabama and even parts of Florida into Tuesday night as well. And then you move on to Wednesday. And you can see here, earlier in the day here, Really, the area here that's going to have most of the severe weather activity will probably be 
will likely be across parts of Alabama to the Florida Panhandle. Some of the models have been trending slower with this as well. So that's something I should note. And look at this here. This is the Super Sick Composite here. This is a peak time heating on Wednesday. You can see here uh, the high, the numbers from the from the Nam family have really gone up since yesterday here, and that kind of tells you something uh, right there a little bit. But there is still some uncertainty here. That should be noted because the Hermal's not as aggressive with it. But then again, it's still a little bit far out, so some things could still change. The Hermal's not the best when it comes to towards the end run, so I'll probably be a little bit more comfortable looking at it tomorrow. Once at least for the entire event. But anyway, uh, the Nam family is pretty aggressive with this. It's got pretty elevated super suck positive values, especially in this area right here. Even with the highest Nam, it's the same way as well. You even got elevated numbers further to the south as well. If we get a sounding in parts of northwestern Georgia, for an example here, see what the sounding looks like. And really, conditions will be favorable for all hazards. Well, maybe not so much for the hail here. But you also notice here there's a strong elevated mix layer. That could help limit shower and thunderstorm to development here. So that's one thing to note. Also, your low of adjust is not very strong. It's not terribly strong or anything. But there is a little bit of wind direction of height there at the same time. Then again, decent amount of instability. There is some winter to work with. So this will be favorable. Maybe a localized wind threat. And there might be a weak tornado or two in there as well. But I think the threat overall is a little bit on the lower end side here as well. Especially when you got a strong elven mix layer going on here as well. Which will help limit shower and thunderstorm development out there as well. And then you go for areas further north. If we go to northeastern Kentucky. You can see here, wind shear values are actually better as you get further north here. And the elephant mix layer is slightly weaker here, so that could lead to more thunderstorm development up here. It could be a little bit more widespread than areas further south here. But even with that here, there's still plenty of instability. Plus, lap rates are a little bit stronger as well. And also, dew points are right around 62. And you also got a good hodograph up here as well. So, really... The northern mode may look a little bit better than server mode here. Server mode. But this is the NAM. And the NAM doesn't do the best job here. But it has been. But it does have some consistency with it, though. So I'll kind of have to give it with that as well. But it is something to keep an eye on. And the highest NAM is pretty darn similar uh, with it. Uh, with the NAM as well. But then again, here, there's still some uncertainty when it comes to Wednesday here. I think we'll have a little better idea with it. And you can also see here, severe weather risk will, could continue further to the east here throughout the night. It may be into Thursday as well. But you can see here, severe weather risk could back off as you move further to the east uh, as well. But then again, still some uncertainty or still some uncertainty for Wednesday here. And we'll probably have a better idea on Wednesday here tomorrow. Hopefully tomorrow. But anyways, guys, that's all for guys today. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys like this video, hit the like button. If you do like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so you don't miss an upload. If you guys have questions about this, put a comment section down below. I'll answer you guys' questions. I'll see you guys in the next video. Goodbye and have a good day.